Hello, and welcome to How to Be a Better DM, a part of Session Zero Studios. Uh, I'm your host, Tanner Wayland, and I'm here with a couple of friends, Justin Lewis. Say hi. Hi. And Caden Otley. What is up? We're so happy to have you guys. It's uh, It's been a sec since we've, you know, the three amigos up in here, right? It's uh, <laughs> feels good. Sure is. Absolutely. And we got a great topic uh, for today. Uh, just a, a small note, though. As I mentioned, we are part of the Session Zero Studios uh, network. And as part of that, uh, we do have a new website. It's Session Zero Studios. And it's zero, the, the number not spelled out. SessionZeroStudios.com. So go to that if you want to find out more about uh, the other podcasts we're working on or what's up with us. But uh, let's get into the topic. And today, the topic is how can we make our NPCs be more realistic, more engaging, and just all around a better experience for our players? Uh, Caden, you kind of pitched this idea to us. What kind of experience have you had with like the difference that a realistic NPC can bring to a game? Well, yeah, the reason that I pitched it was because um, I noticed I was playing D&D with Justin last night (laughs) and I noticed Justin pause while he was getting ready to voice an NPC and say, oh, what would his name is Benry? What would Benry say? And uh, that was that was the moment I was like, oh, I was like normally in in my campaigns, I, you know, find myself maybe like just saying something and then i'm like maybe that wasn't the best maybe my character would have said something different and so i don't know having a more well thought out answer um or really taking time to get into character might just bring the story to life yeah yeah i i totally agree with that and uh and justin since you were the person voicing benry what did that that kind of pause do for you well i think it did what the first thing it did was really just give me a second to actually think uh, because the situation is kind of complicated with Benry. Um, and with with every NPC, I don't think you necessarily need to think that way, right? And I, I think that's sort of the beauty of what we're talking about because there is a scale of the different NPCs and kind of the involvement you need, right? You don't necessarily need to think about their motivations when they're just selling an item to a, a traveler. But in Benry's case, uh, he had been with the party sometime before, and he had been tricked by the party, <laughs> maybe coerced, maybe persuaded, to drink a potion that basically made him fade into the shadow fell, right? He started just becoming a more depressed person and slowly, slowly That's fade into the shadow fell. Uh, and when you know it, he turns back up, you know, as, as, a, as a, a, a character, he's 10 years in the future, right? He's aged 10 years. And now he's also like a fully developed level 11 NPC. And he kind of has a grudge a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's important to think about the scope of the, the NPC that you're, they're thinking about when you start to ask these questions of like, what are they going to say? Or how would they act in this particular situation? Yeah, that, I like that too because it, it kind of gets to the heart of of like, hey, the question: How often should you, or how many super realistic NPCs should you have? Like, should you only have a few tent pole and NPCs, so to speak, or should you treat everyone as if they have a whole life? You know, they're going back to their wife and kids back home, or they have a hobby on the side. Like, that's a lot of work, and I'm sure that that would be wonderful, but for for a lot of us, especially if you're a DM that likes to improvise more um, and isn't super into preparing and writing out everything, then, you know, it's just so much work to make every NPC have just deep motivations and and deep happenings in their life. But But what I like about what you were saying is that in many ways, an NPC can be as real as the party would benefit from them being. If that makes sense, as in like, if your party is just like buying an item from a random merchant, the merchant can be like, have just a couple lines of dialogue, essentially, where he's like, oh, this thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's 10 gold coins. Oh, you bartered me down. Fine. Yeah, be forgettable. Exactly. Right. But then on the other hand, it's like 
if suddenly you're trying to, I don't know, ruin someone's life by uh, pushing them into the shadow fell random example, uh, then what's going to happen is like, hey, this this throwaway forgettable NPC, suddenly I'm going to want to think a lot more about what what does he care about? What does he do when he's vindictive? Things like that, you know? Well, I was going to say, um, <clears throat> it makes me think of like when you go to the grocery store or you go to the doctor's office and you pass someone in the elevator and you sort of sort of share like this micro moment in your life. In a way, they're sort of like an NPC in your life. And if you dug further, they would naturally have those motivations and things like that. But I think it's interesting because those people still feel real, right? They just don't necessarily feel uh, like it, you don't feel interactive with them unless you choose to be. And I think that you can kind of use that to your favor with NPCs as well. That's true. So you can kind of guide your party in the right direction based on who's interesting and who's not. Yeah. Or, or, or who the party takes interest in as well. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I think it's also important, like, because uh, that's, there's almost two questions. It's like, how do you make a realistic NPC? And also when should you? And that's a great point that you made, like when the party's interested, then you should be interested in making the NPC be more multidimensional. Uh, but also you can even like, maybe the party isn't interested, but you can kind of tell there's a lull and maybe like the past few times they've talked to a merchant or gone to the library searching for something or whatever, uh, they've had like the NPCs have all been forgettable. Then that's a perfect time to be like, oh, suddenly the librarian has a real attitude and they're being real spooky and mysterious. And, or they have a cat that you have to befriend in order to get into the library or something, right? Like, you kind of have to keep your eye out for moments that not only the players are kind of telegraphing, but also that the story, like, hey, is it a lull? Then let's make this character a lot more fleshed out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think as you say that, like, I'm, I'm just thinking of some of the actual play podcasts that I've listened to. Uh, and even sort of forgettable NPCs can be made unforgettable, just like you said, kind of by some of their actions and attitudes, not necessarily like fleshing them out as a character, but like you said, the librarian has a bit of sass, right? And you go in just hoping to, you know, rent a book and the librarian's like, yeah, I don't really like people like you, whatever your name, you know, it's just like yeah. it can, it can create this whole encounter just because you decided to make him have this particular attribute. Yeah. And, and this kind of, this segues nicely into talking about how to do this well, because I feel like, I feel like sometimes uh, DMs and I'm guilty of this, we, we don't realize what feels realistic and what feels kind of like t exposition -y, you know, like uh, we, we think that if an NPC is talking about a lot of stuff and has a lot to say, that that means that they feel realistic or impactful to the player. But but that's not always the case. You know, sometimes uh, sometimes the players talk to them and they're like, okay, okay, too much info. What do I need to do? You know? <laughs> yeah. And so I just, I was wondering from your guys' perspective, what makes an NPC feel real? Like which specific qualities make it feel more real and fleshed out rather than kind of like a cutout of a person? Well, from a player perspective, I mean, so part of the reason that I brought this up as a topic is because it's something that I think I can learn um, how to do. You know, I was like, this, this is something that I could benefit from. Um, but for me, something that makes NPCs feel real when I'm playing is real life consequences. You know, if you, if you were rude to a shopkeeper, how would that shopkeeper realistically behave you know are they just gonna continue to want to sell you things or are they gonna want to kick you out of the shop if you keep it up or are they gonna give you a warning you know yeah i really like that uh so i think that what caden was saying about you know it would are they acting in a way that isn't just like oh this is totally a video game character who can't kick you out of your shop like <laughs> that's an obvious tell that, you know, th this isn't a real experience. You can kind of mess with them because hey, they're a video game character, essentially. 
But Justin, what do you think makes, aside from the realistic responses, what else makes an NPC feel fleshed out and real? This is like a really, really good question because it's also, I think it goes beyond just the N in NPC to just C, I guess, right? Like this applies to both your characters, your playable characters and your non-playable characters. And even what I, what immediately I think about is like Brandon Sanderson and his books. And one of the reasons why I think they're so good is because he makes all the characters feel real, right? Mm -hmm. it, and I think also this is something that I personally struggle with too. But I think one thing that allows him to do that I th is maybe he understands people really well, right? Like he can kind of, and, and maybe it's just because he takes people he knows and kind of puts them into books and stuff. But um, I, I think a, a better understanding of people at their root would definitely help that because you'd understand that, yeah, this shopkeeper that we've been talking about, you know, probably going to see the adventurers like one time. But the shopkeeper, you know, puts his pants on one leg at a time, wears a shirt, probably eats bread at some point in his life, like, you know, has some, a lot of common similarities with other people. So in a way, what makes him the same as your characters? What makes him different? And like, how do you really understand him as a person? That's probably a very long-winded answer, but. Well, it's interesting, you know, I love Brandon Sanderson too. And you just reminded me of an Instagram post of his that I saw a while ago, or maybe it was on YouTube but he talked about one of his writing exercises. And I think he probably does understand people well. And I think that the way he came to be that way is by practice with, um, with dialogue. His, his, the Instagram post or the YouTube video was all about um, just writing dialogue between two or three characters. And um, and then you change the situation. So, you know, you have different settings in which the same dialogue is happening. So maybe it's on the way to um, the county fair. And then the next time it's on the way to a friend's funeral, you know, <laughs> and you and you're how would the same dialogue be affected by these different situations? Yeah, that's I, I, I was even going to bring up and I'm glad that you mentioned this. Because that's a great way of framing it, like different situations kind of round out what they look like. Because, I don't know, we've talked a lot about generic NPCs like, oh, librarian or merchant. Have those NPCs ever appeared in front of your uh, players in different situations or interacting with each other? You know, maybe you're in the store talking with the merchant and suddenly the librarian whose cat you killed <laughs> walks in and they're friends with the merchant. And suddenly the haggling that you did kind of means nothing because, oh my goodness, this person's in, like, suddenly you're like, oh my goodness, that's right. They wouldn't be in the library all this time. And now they're going to screw up this, uh, this deal that I'm working out, you know? But at the same time, that it adds a lot of flavor and also makes it so like, oh, you've got to have a conversation that's not just you kind of setting the terms. You have to kind of deal with the situation as it is, which is what normal humans do, you know? Yeah. I think, I think that situation is really interesting because it even goes back to <clears throat> a little bit about human nature, but also um, just kind of a funny quirk, you know, like we all, you know, unless you were homeschooled when you were growing up in public school or charter school, you see your teacher at Walmart or Target or whatever grocery store you frequent. You're like, whoa, like what? Like there's their person, you know? And I think that's a great example of an NPC in someone's life having a specific role and then like maybe breaking them out of that role a little bit just to prove that, you know, all the NPCs are sort of real. And I think that's actually a pretty good tactic, right? So maybe what you could do is you have a shop and people, you know, your party goes in to buy things and then the shopkeeper sees something that the party has and the shopkeeper's like, whoa, that's really cool. Can you tell me about that? That's one of my hobbies. And, and you know, it, it can kind of make the the one feel real. And by association, all of them feel real in a way. Yeah. Uh, and and kind of uh, talking about practicing this, this making NPCs real. Uh, I think that just doing what 
what we've been talking about just barely that, that Caden brought up. Try and put NPCs, like introduce them in a certain way and then have them come back. You know, have them return to the limelight in a very different situation. Maybe it's like, oh, you met with a town guard and you had to get past them into the town, but then you also run into them uh, in the dungeon because they were tasked with a group of guards to go get it. And then suddenly you're going to find that these NPCs, you're not going to, they're not going to be nearly as forgettable, right? Absolutely. Sure. Um, so a- any final thoughts on, you know, or advice that you guys have? Well, let's start with Caden. Well, um, at least personally, I'm excited. I think I will probably go and practice some just general dialogue between maybe common NPCs that my players might find, but then also the NPCs that I've hashed out. Um, Maybe just put them in different situations and kind of see what comes up and see if I can understand their personalities a little bit better so that I'm able to, in the moment, become them. You know, yeah. Uh, and if you practice like that, then you're going to be a lot. You know, you're going to be warmed up for when the actual situation comes. Love that. Yeah, yeah. Justin. Yeah, I have uh, a couple tips. Um, so a, a couple of these are kind of quick, but one, uh, using using idioms like local. Um, I don't know the term like slang, maybe that mm. that would also make them feel real. Um, there's lots of people on Instagram that kind of specialize in this. Uh, the next thing is, you know, acting classes I think could help. Um, I've actually, I just looked up some improv classes here in Utah and they range from like 25 bucks to like 200 bucks. So, uh, (laughs) wow. Go Um, for it. Go 200 bucks. Go. Exactly. (laughs) Um, I also think it's good to have or build up a bank of NPCs because if you're a DM, you're probably going to DM for multiple parties right uh and there's nothing wrong with taking the same general npc putting him in a different role or a different spot changing up some things and it's still somewhat realistic you know you just you know uh you kind of make do <clears throat> the last thing i'd say is to commit uh and this is something i learned in 10th grade 11th grade excuse me uh from my percussion teacher in high school uh he was this really kind of like rock star kind of guy you know he he was a drummer um and he basically said like you got to commit to things like you think the jonas brothers came out and one day we're like dang like we're the jonas brothers no they're like we're the effing jonas brothers right and people because they committed and they owned that you know they they became famous they became wealthy because mm-hmm. of their full commitment to that also anime does this extremely well uh, in Western culture, our you know character concepts aren't necessarily as outrageous, but in anime, you could have like a, a character with sort of a weird power or ability, but they're like, "I'm gonna use this, right? I'm gonna do this. I'm awesome," and they commit to that, and it it makes a really cool character. So I would say when you are your NPCs, commit to being the NPC. Don't do it kind of half heartedly, because. Even if you don't say the right things, I think you'll still have a fun time because your your players will feel your energy, and that you know that just makes the whole thing much better. That's a great tip. Seriously, like when you do commit, it's like it's okay to be goofy because because you're not gonna get. Uh, I saw this video uh, where someone was talking about uh, some of the big podcasts and uh, you know like the critical roles, the Dimension Twenties. And like showing clips of them, like getting really into it. And they're like, is this acting? And they're like, well, I've done acting and I've done D&D. And I have to say that not everyone that knows how to act can get that same kind of emotion. And rather it was about role playing and really putting yourself into the shoes of the person. Because if you do that and you're able to do that realistically, then then it's going to be super obvious that you get like emotional or into it or commit because you're, you know, that's what the character would do because they're, they're not a cut out in your mind if you're like putting yourself fully in their shoes. So it's even less about like while acting will improve how that looks, the thing that will make it feel real is you committing to acting like that person actually would be versus just a random mask that you're putting on as a DM, right? Um, but 
anyway, I just really want to thank you too for for all you were sharing today. I I love this topic. Uh, I think we'll have a lot of really you know good discussions going forward, especially with Caden joining us. I mean, let let's be honest, guys. You, Justin and I we're we're just we're only okay, but with Caden, guys, be ready. Yeah, uh, it's right like you have time. you have an apprentice on the show now, so everyone gets to hear what a <laughs> noob sounds like. <laughs> Exactly. No, you no know, we're all noobs in some way or another, right? Yes. True that. Yes. And we're all DMs. And with that, on that note, uh, let's roll initiative. Thank you for listening to today's show. Uh, we really appreciate your support and your patronage. We have a few more announcements to go over. Uh, first, tired of being alone. Are you tired of not having any of your players understand you? Are you tired of never truly belonging? Well, you're in luck. All you need to do is join the Guild. The Guild is a unique and exclusive experience that is only open to Dungeon Masters. It is a full community focused on helping ease your DMing burdens. Want to meet other DMs? Join the Guild. Want to discuss your homebrew ideas with people who would appreciate it instead of just telling your cat? Join the Guild. Want to find a place where all your wildest dreams will come true? Join the guild. Go to monsters.rent slash guild and sign up today for free. Wait, that can't be right. Chuck, Chuck, can you check this again? Is this supposed to be... What? Oh, it's... They're serious? It's free? Oh, okay. All right. Yes, go to monsters.rent slash subscribe slash guild and sign up today for free even though they are crazy for giving this away for free common side effects may include burping sneezing laughing breathing hearing listening tasting farting creating sarcasm puns and in extreme cases explosive diarrhea that's all the announcements we have today again thank you so much for everything you do for us you make this show possible like we said before we'll be back next week with another great episode and until then let's go ahead and roll initiative